I will just finish off here. I will interrupt it because of the mobile 1249B. This will be 1249C. And what I'm trying to show is that if we if we are constructors, we have a building and there is a problem at a certain level, let's say floor in the building, and this floor is close to the foundation, but not in the very foundation. It needs to be tell which floor it is, all these have numbers, which building, maybe it's the, even the first, which floor, where on the floor, what sort of construction mistake is made, or what needs to be regulated. needs to be regulated and I'll say that the current theories or explanations they some say, say take away the whole floor more or less or take away the whole building which like postmodernist conclusions I'd say it needs sharp intense thinking and it needs to be in the exact spot it cannot be any sloppiness here it needs to be where it is at a certain level generalization takes place that are illicit this is what Roberto Mangueira Unger and Lee Smolin is saying a certain level it is not against Science, on the contrary, models, on the contrary, abstraction, on the contrary. Actually, what they are saying had nothing to do with this at all. There's no connection in any way, nothing of the sort, zero. They are as different as a banana and the sense of nostalgia that one could feel maybe today because it's November or the summer something like that I think most I would say it's not even a criticism but it takes the form of criticism at some certain point. Why is it not criticism? Well, it's a... If somebody puts the fault in the wrong floor, usually with covering too much, they would say it's a lack of specification from the man that made the fault. He's not off. This should be like this. He's not off not incorrect, it's not correct. It's the level of specification that's wrong, which is a completely different thing from being wrong or right. I am start wondering if the postmodernists and other, other critics of uh, scientific theory are doing the mistakes and they have actually been doing the whole thing at this service. Why? Well, this would be a disservice to the constructor or the builders for the same reason. And I would say if a mistake is made here of specification, we'll say 
that part of the building without specifying, not even saying which floors are part of that cutout, which is important to understand. Uh, they're not saying take the floors two, three, four, then they're pointing with a whole hand. That is what they are doing. Uh, I would say that the current criticism, misunderstanding about science makes science stronger in the format that Unger and uh, Smolling sees as problematic. The second aspect, trying to help these people, and especially thinking about Rupert Sheldrake, uh, I always liked him as a has such a nice demeanor. <clears throat> has he done a disservice to science or a service to science? I have to be blunt. I think he's actually, although whole how nice he is and all that, he's been doing a disservice by putting the criticism wrong and then by weakening the whole thing. <coughs> You never want criticism to be weak. No one is helped by that. Well, one is, one tendency is, and that is the one is getting criticized. If there were to be a debate and you're a politician, you want to have weak criticism. You don't, you don't want people to applaud you. Why is that? Well, the reason is weak criticism you can actually help your case once you're starting to talk. <coughs> in this case, there is no one talking. This is automatic. It's in the system. Therefore, every weak attack bound to make the perception as, of science as mutable, objective, uh, functioning, having no faults. Uh, getting even stronger. This is not a fault of science in reality, in the ordinary sense. It is a discovery, so to speak, or it's a very sharp slash, sharp pointing out slash discovery of something hidden deep in our knowledge. And anyone who doesn't understand that knowledge has depth, he can, he can stop listening now because it has Knowledge has depth in every person, in every ideology. It's the depth to it. <clears throat> so those are the differences. But there are similarities that can be used here in this metaphor. The rottenness, so to speak, which is not really rottenness, it's deep down. And that means the effect is going to be severe. Another effect is how it used to at least influence other sciences. And I think, as Mangueira or Roberto said, Roberto as it's pronounced in Brazilian, I heard, I don't know. As he says, The most influence, except outside of science, is in the ordinary mind, and it's called pseudo belief. And I think this word is completely called for. We don't have a word for that. Pseudo belief, I'm just going to write it out, it's so good. That's the only, I don't think it's a neologism from Roberto. Zudo belief or Zudo thinking, and it's a general sense that science is working without problems, that there is not an illicit generalization on a certain level. Not that they are not, not critic they are not criticizing universe universals or generalities. It is not against models. Models are incredibly important. They're even more important than science today. Realize constructs, models, all that. But 
that Zulu belief, which is not a proper belief, but is a general assumption or a feeling or a sense, I think that's the best one, it's a sense of things being in a certain way, which you never really figured on. And you wouldn't either be able to sit down and say, I'm going to think this through. It needs to be pointed out. And therefore, of course, the importance of the book a single universe. You cannot sit under a tree and get an apple in your head and then you realize gravity exists. I think that really, really happened. You didn't get an apple in his head. Uh, that's not possible here. What is hidden in knowledge cannot easily be excavated because well, for one good reason, this has been hidden for 2,500 years, without a doubt. I think the plausibility that a golden key somewhere in the Amazons would be found would be bigger than that this coming up without somebody being a complete genius. This is I'm quite certain of. Only man and in, in itself. I would say this as a concluding remark. Sorry about sounding a bit psychophantic towards uh, Roberto and Lee. I think especially Lee wouldn't appreciate that psychophancy. But there is an extraordinary feat of creativity here. Um, I would say the actual feat of creativity shows that the world is not as lawful because that thing would never evolve if the universe was anything like the Newtonian concept of strict, unmovable, unchangeable, immutable laws. This shows that they are not immutable. Otherwise, that level of creativity would never ever come about. How it came about, I have no idea. Uh, Smolin says, says himself that in the beginning with his insight, he, he thought what he was saying himself was completely weird and out of way. It was almost like he was possessed by something or he had one view among all his views that he regarded as uh, normally sound. And then he had this odd view. A bit like a person I used to know uh, who had this incredible strength and idea that mushrooms to every price should be avoided. It didn't fit his spectrum. He didn't even eat canned mushrooms because of this. And I think that is that was in his case an exaggerated exemption. And uh, this is Probably how Lee Smolin perceived the whole thing in the beginning. But you get used to it. And once you uncover the whole thing, uh, by going back to the metaphor with the house here, somebody can be standing outside the house. I think this is a rather good metaphor. Outside the house, standing on the street, forget about all these things, forget about these things, looking at the building and saying, what a nice and sound structure and then moving a truck into it and it still holds because maybe the fault is such that it won't turn up until two years later maybe there is which is very common in Sweden for instance that you don't put enough air between the insulation and the actual roof and therefore you have a working principle for about 10 years because so long the wooden structure of the roof will hold against the wetness coming from this, the humidity. But then you have mold and then you have a problem and then that could destroy the whole house. The house of science won't fall. So there the metaphor holds. But what will be happen it will hamper science and this hampering, I think, is the reason for some people uh, criticizing science, but in a very broad-mannered way.
like tear the building down. That won't work. I don't think any criticism would work because we need an insight to. It's not enough to say, I have a general feeling of something wrong about science. A bit like Rupert Sheldrake, I don't like general science because my, uh, my insights are being insights that I'm pretty certain of for good reasons because of his intelligence and so forth and therefore I need to criticize science and by doing so he's strengthening science and the problem with science is there anything he could have done? No. Could anything in this story be changed? No. That's important. I think in this, in the way, knowledge is more deterministic. If you don't have the knowledge, you simply don't have it. Whereas the world is anything from deterministic. How could all these miracles happen? Well, we don't believe in miracles today. And there is a good reason for not believing in miracles. When this problem in the structure is, is, is here, which is not a small problem, that's a big one. When that is put in place, we will block out all the miracles. And I was, I'm certain that this is what Sheldrake is doing himself. He's blocking them out. Why? You cannot honestly be believe, because this is a place. Knowledge is knowledge. It's not an owner of knowledge. It says not a certain polarity of knowledge. The, the one who's defending science, that is, is, are not holders of science. Knowledge is in itself. It's not under the arms of everyone. And therefore, the very, I would say the very gestalt, the model that uh, this problem in science is putting out, that science for some reason is something that you can hold in your hands, own, and you can control it, you can put intention to it. You can say, and this is really wrong, I understand that the institutions of science are defending this view. Wrong, 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 wrong. <laughs> this is very far from the truth. It is a problem built into the thinking, into the knowing. And it's situated in a place you can't see it. In some ways, some aspects, it's, it is... It would be like a cancer tumour in the head on someone, which is inoperable and you don't even know where it is, if it is, a bit like that. You cannot cut out this thing without knowing exactly where it is. You cannot cut it out by bringing the whole thing out. There are some similarities between knowledge and, for instance, space. What you want of space doesn't necessarily change what space is, as classical physics wants you to believe. And you can change point of reference at your will. No, knowledge in a way is less susceptible. Because, why? Because knowledge in this sense really means something. It has consequences. It is also something that can enrich in your life. And I think that would be a little of a summary, a hinter to the understanding. And wow, it was 20 minutes of a hint. Okay, that was 1249C. Change that into C. How do I do that? Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much and bye bye.